Welcome to the Sound of Movement podcast. This week we are talking about exercise habits and routines and today it's all about how following a program that balances your training is going to help with your performance. This is something that if you get right, you are going to start seeing some serious progress with your training. What's up everybody? Uh, If we haven't met before. My name's Yanni Bormeister. Across the table from me is my brother Rad. Behind the mixer is the voice of God, the sexy, most sexy Richard Lellies. And next to me is the smartest person in the world, Phil White. Uh, We are Unity Gym and the Unified Movement System. Big shout out to everyone joining us on the podcast. We are fast approaching 50,000 listens. And uh, that's very exciting for us. Uh, We want you to subscribe and give us a five-star review. It's going to help grow this podcast exponentially. Big warm welcome to everyone catching the replay on YouTube. We love you long time. We've got so much coming for our YouTube channel this year. We're very, very excited about it. Smash that like button. This is your opportunity to send some love back. Hit the like button and make sure you have subscribed to the channel. We're going to be re-releasing weekly workouts this year. And uh, a big warm welcome to those people joining us live in the UMS Movement Mastermind. Hello, Stephen Pellegrino joining us from the USA. Let us know who you are, where you're tuning in from. And guys, if you haven't, if you haven't already... Uh, and, you're, and you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, get yourself over to Facebook, join the UMS Movement Mastermind Group, and you can interact with us live here. We'll give you some love, like Dal Jit and Dave Clark. Uh, now, yeah, I have missed your hyperbole since being in WA. I just did not have enough of it in my life. So it's uh, <laughs> good Mate, to be back and getting, getting the pump up. We uh, are happy days. super excited about today's show. Yesterday was all about the issues that you might face if you don't balance your training or have a balanced training approach. And we had to delicately navigate that discussion without giving away too much because today is the fun part where we get to talk about performance and how it's going to elevate you and uh and level your skill level your performance up and we're going to share some personal stories uh about our own training but we're also going to share some experiences we've had with some of the strongest people in the world and the way that they program to balance and the results that they get with uh with some of the world's best power lifters uh and uh and weightlifters. so very very exciting discussion we got blakely on the live stream how good is that thanks blakely it's so good to be back and we've got uh, Amanda, and yeah. Uh, we are yeah. Let's let's. let's how's um yeah. how's the trumpeters going over there, Blakely? Oh my goodness, <laughs> we've been watching. We've been watching for everyone over in the US. We've been watching like live the the situation unfolding today at the Capitol building, Full and it's on. it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy to see. I'm sure you guys probably feel the same way. Uh, anyway, we won't go. We won't dive into the reads on that one. Uh, but. Um, Okay, so we, the, f- the way we first want to start this off is because we, we, we have to assume that not everyone caught yesterday's podcast. So the very first thing we want to talk about quickly, just very quickly address, is two of the things. The, the joint stability uh, concept, uh, issue, notion, principle, uh, and also the um, uh, efficiency principle. So first I'll get Phil to explain <coughs> again what joint glide is and why it's important that we have stable joints which come from a balance between the prime movers and the the deeper stabilizer muscle systems. And we're going to talk about uh, why it's also important to think of the body and, the jo- and its joints as a series of systems that want to work uh, nicely together uh, in, yep. in, synchro- in, in it's, harmony. It's all about systems because if you uh, have a, a joint structure, if you just focus on strengthening one particular muscle of that system, then the system will break down. So with every system, you have uh, reinforcing processes and balancing processes. So basically, if reinforcing sounds like a good thing, but if you reinforce one part of the system too much, so the pec major, for example, if you just keep strengthening that, then you can start to see how that would make the whole structure, the whole system uh, become weaker. But if you balance the you know strengthening of the you know, pec major for example with the balancing process so opposing muscle groups um, and also stabilizing muscle groups then the whole system gets stronger so it's not enough just to reinforce bits of it you have to re- reinforce and balance so that's the basics of kind of system thinking when applied to joints um, now when thinking global uh, muscles versus local control muscles uh, if you think of pec major again um, you can kind of think of that as like the accelerator on a um, on a car. So if you're pushing, you're really, you know, and you've got big, strong pecs, and that's going to be accelerating, it's going to be contracting powerfully. And if you, uh, you know, accelerators are great, but if you need to have brakes to have control to turn to do anything. So um, the 
rotator cuff acts as the brakes on um, on the pec major. So basically, when you're when you're pushing, your muscles are dumb. All they can do is contract and relax. They can't control. Uh, so the pec major would just anteriorly dislocate your shoulder if it didn't have any other um, structures. Anterior meaning forward. Yeah, forward. It would just pull would just, the shoulder out forwards. Yeah, exactly. But we have st structures in place, both passive and active, that help keep that joint integrity. And so the big ones uh, is the rotator cuff, where you know most people think about ro training rotator cuff as doing external rotations, but what they're really there for is to stop anterior glide. So if the pec is going to anteriorly dislocate your shoulder, pull it out forward, then your rotator cuff there is kind of, you know, putting the brakes on, holding onto it, making sure it doesn't come out and keeping it uh, rotating within the joint nicely, which makes it both, um, you know, safer, but also much stronger because with the body, it can only produce force effectively if it feels like it's in a safe range of motion. So um, there's a classic sort of sh uh, shoulder stress test where you put it up into this position of extension abduction and external rotation and it, some people you know when they go there they just seize yeah. up they can't can't hold that position because basically if you don't feel stable in that position your body will just lock freak down. out and then yep. the the test is then you put your just create a bit of support by pushing down on here and it feels better. This is something a physio does to you, so don't try this. It doesn't really work <laughs> don't home. try this. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's like kind of a, a classic sort of test of whether or not someone has the control and stability in their shoulder. So it's just a, a, yeah, a good example of how important stability is for production of strength. Yep. And, and, and then on a, uh, on, a, on a more sort of macro level, you've got the, uh, the balance between the two opposing um, uh, outer unit muscles, the, the big, the big global muscles. And, and this is a great, this is where Rad can sort of provide a little bit of personal insight because, uh, he had quite a big imbalance between his, his pulling muscles and his pushing muscles. His bench press was quite weak and his chin ups and rows were quite strong. And that in and of itself, uh, creates a, 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 a problem and it, it usually results in just a plateau in strength because your body kind of doesn't want to uh, produce maximal force when there's an imbalance there because it, it knows that there's an imbalance there but in its in the worst case scenario it can lead to more common injuries and and rad certainly found that out last year with two slap tears in the shoulder which was sort of him just pushing his body beyond what it wanted to do yeah. How did sure. that feel? <laughs> <laughs> Fucked. <laughs> Fucked. It was horrible. It um, was a shit show, like Blakely's saying especially here. Especially because <laughs> it just, it just, like they, the, the, just the way that they came on was just so quick, you know? There was such an acute thing. It was something that I just felt immediately, you know? Like I was training and I just went, oh, what was that? And just immediately, like I just couldn't lift my arm properly. And, and then when I understood, I'd heard about slap tests a lot, like, you know, whenever I'd gone to a workshop and people were talking about these really bad things that can go on in your shoulders and a slap tear was one of the things that kept coming up in a lot of workshops that I'd done and I remember always thinking to myself, God, I don't ever want to get one of those. And I just and couldn't. You one in both shoulders. Yeah, one in whammy. Both, so. Double whammy, both <laughs> yeah. shoulders. Um, I'd have to say, I think without being a physio, I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of a, um, I wouldn't say an expert, but I think I'm quite a knowledgeable person on how to deal with a slap tear now. And um, it's funny because, you know, I, I, I fixed the first slap tear without surgery. I did get a cortisone injection on that first one. Um, and I, I managed to pretty much say 95% rehabilitate it within about 12 months. But the second one, I've had the same, I, I'm at the same point after about three months than I was uh, after about six or nine months with the first one. So my ability to deal with the second time around is was so much better than the first time. Partly because I know what to do, but I, I believe more importantly because of the, the work that I did, which is what you're trying to get me to get to, where, where I identified, okay, I've got a poor structural balance within my shoulders and I worked on that as my rehab for the first one. So that structural balance is there now when the second one happens so the second one was it, was, it just wasn't as severe and it was, yeah. i was able to deal with it so much quicker and it's really important to understand with like we were talking about kind of global muscles so the the prime like the moving muscles and then stability muscles mu like the muscle systems aren't kind of that simple so there's a huge role at the larger muscles so your pecs your deltoids your um your lats your rhomboids there's a huge role for them in a stabilizing context as well. So yeah. co-contraction of joints is, is really key for um, uh, for stability. So what that means is basically muscles contracting on both sides of 
um, all, all around the joint and that has a huge role in stability so it's not just the rotator cuff that's doing stability not just the axios the axioscapula the muscles that control the shoulder blade that are doing stability yep. your big global muscles are co-contracting keeping the joint um in the right sort of place so it's yeah. interesting you say that because I, we actually had a comment the other day on one of our youtube videos uh the video is about how to improve overhead mobility and the gentleman <coughs> um asked a comment saying i seem to have excessive overhead mobility uh is there in any way that i can sort of reduce it he asked to reduce it and i will and and my answer to that is not uh don't don't worry about reducing it just worry about building some muscle like build your pecs build your delts build your lats build your biceps build the, uh, the traps, build all the structures around there, just hypertrophy, and that in and of itself is gonna help secure your shoulders a lot more. Like one of the, and this is the thing but when just, we- Just quickly on that, with like, it, it, you don't have to get like hugely bigger muscles, like a lot of strength gains come from neurological changes. So, you know, for any hypermobile women out there who don't wanna, you know, get all like, all the big yeah. muscles that you were just talking about there, like it doesn't m mean you have to get really hypertrophied huge bulging bulging muscles to control yeah, yeah. like it's it's all about building strength which is very hard to build hypertrophy until you, yeah yeah so yeah but by building control through that range will be yeah in a lot that's place. right but when, when i say build i mean build as in build, build yeah. strength yeah. build size build <coughs> everything yeah yeah uh just build capacity there and it's going to uh it's going to sort it out so then we're going to flip back to you know we, we, uh, off off the show just before here we were talking about um, experiences with one of our friends uh, Sebastian Orb who's Australian strength coach who um, used to train Hathor Bjornsson for his um, um, uh, strongman. He trains arguably most of the best or a lot of the best, a handful of the best powerlifters in, in Australia. Uh, he is an amazing powerlifter himself, holds a couple of Australian records. And, uh, and he even with his powerlifters has suggested, you know, when they come, why don't, yeah, why don't you share that? A comment, like at the moment I'm working with Bass, um, I'm collaborating with him on his upcoming courses. And so I'm helping with him with the anatomy component of his online personal trainer course. Um, so. Yeah, been been talking to him recently about all this stuff. A lot of it, you know, he's talking structural balance as well. And he was saying that when he gets a really big bench presser come to him who wants to get an even bigger bench press, so we're talking people who are benching like 250 plus kilos or, you know, like double body weight and a bit more sort of, is that right? Yeah, anyway, really heavy, like 200 plus uh, kilo bench press. What he does is doesn't really touch the bench until he's looked at the structural balance between the pushing and pulling muscles and if there's a, a change there then his main focus is on like really building the pulling muscles putting all of the intensity of training into the pulling muscles and then as a result of building that uh balance and and structural yeah structural balance and strength uh in the shoulder system then the whole system gets stronger so again it's about those reinforcing and balancing processes you could just keep trying to reinforce the bench press but until you've built up the balancing processes you're, you're not going to get um a change and that's yeah what he, he's been doing and it's really worked so yeah, yeah i think it's a great example of how uh yeah balance does yeah. boost your performance and that's even i mean so far in the show we've it, we, we seem to have steered this conversation really towards the direction of balance between agonist and antagonist in a joint. But uh, another part of balance within our program is the balance between strength and flexibility as well, which is um, which is something that we wanted to talk about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine a you know look at the, like uh, Olympic gymnasts and like <laughs> if they had you know too much of one or too much of the other, then they just couldn't do the things they could do. Yeah, before before we get onto that, because that's where we're going to finish the show. Question of the day, guys. We want to know in the comments section: Have you ever suffered a structural imbalance between two opposing muscle systems, i.e., a push-pull pattern or a squat deadlift pattern? Are the two most example, uh, most most obvious examples. I know anyone who's doing a UMS online coaching is going to be able to answer this very easily because we do test for this every six weeks in our mesocycles as our testing week. But if you have, if you're aware of it, and if you are in the UMS and you guys do have one at the moment that you're working through, let us know in the comments so that we can uh, we can help you out with what you should be working on most. The guys in the UMS will probably already know that because that's what we teach them. But uh, uh, we would like to know if you've if you know that you're really strong in one movement, we can then tell you what the opposing movement probably should be, and uh, and you can let us know whether you are good at it or not, and we can help you with that. Anyway. Moving on, because this is where the conversation gets nice and interesting. How does the relationship or balance between strength and flexibility improve performance? And well, 
you got, you want to you want to take this, do you? I, I just wanted to start with the most obvious, which is the stretch shortening cycle. And this is something that has been quite profound for me personally, although I don't do Olympic weightlifting anymore, uh, just because I don't really have the time and, and, uh, and, and passion for it as much as I used to. Uh, we did used to have Olympic weightlifting platforms here and it was a big part of our training, but it was just not it was too difficult to, to, to hold people back and it was causing a little bit of issue in our group classes. Uh, but that is the most obvious, but for the stretch shortening cycle for me, the way this has impacted me is getting more flexible in the lower extremities has allowed me to increase my squat performance big time. Uh, what used to feel very, very difficult for me in a, a barbell back squat or a front squat uh, you, is, is now quite easy and quite comfortable and uh, it feels a lot safer. And uh, the, the more obvious example of that is Olympic weightlifting. Uh, using the stretch shortening cycle is absolutely imperative and critical for a high level weightlifter because they need to be able to bounce out of the bottom range of a front squat when they're doing a clean and jerk and also even a, uh, a snatch. You know, you have to be able to hit that bottom range without hurting yourself to, ca to get under the bar. So that's the most obvious example of where strength and flexibility uh, couples together. But what Phil said also with, with gymnastics is also very, very uh, important and calisthenics. Yeah, well, I remember one of the first times that I saw how my flexibility had um, allowed me to do other things easier than most people was when I did a rock climbing course. So I did a, this was back when I was, you know, training to be a stuntman. And I went and did a weekend rock climbing course where you got a certificate that I could use for stunt training. And so we went up to the Blue Mountains and there was this professional rock climber that took us on two days of abseiling and rock climbing, about a group of six of us. And man, it was crazy watching a professional rock climber climb in front of you because we did a whole bunch of free climbing. I don't know what you call it, um, but it's it wasn't top belay climbing. It was where he yeah. would climb up and then put an anchor point in and then he'd do that a couple of times until he got to the top and then he belayed us from the top. And watching, I mean, some of these walls, I remember looking at them the first time just going, where the hell do you hold on to on that? And he went up like 15 meters or something before he put the first anchor point in. And we were, and he just went up like Spider-Man. It yeah. would have taken him, it was probably about a meter per second, you know, of his climb rate. And I remember we, we were looking at him at about the, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here, but at about the 15 meter mark going, man, if this dude drops here, he's gone. Yeah. And then he'd put an anchor point in. Anyway, when I, I did this climb and I'm sitting there trying to figure out where I'm gonna go and I looked at this spot, you know, where it looked like a good foothold and I put my foot up and I remember hearing the guys down the bottom, I, I used it and I got up to the next spot and the guys down the bottom were all making jokes going, oh my God, I'm not gonna be doing a move like that. And I had to, and then when I watched when they climbed and the way that they just could not get their leg up to where I could um, without any effort. And the reason why is because if you, you try to lift your knee up, if your hamstrings and adductors are tight, then they'll stop your knee from going to a certain point. And it's that lack of flexibility that, that prevents you from producing power at an end range that allowed me to climb better. And one of our members, Jamie, in the morning, she came here because she wanted to improve her rock climbing game. And she's yeah. a very flexible person, but she's developed strength through that range of flexibility because before training here, she didn't know about the um, active flexibility and end range strength that we do here. And she reckons that her rock climbing has just gone through the roof since she's been at Unity Gym. Yeah, and we've got another um, case, Ben, who's a, a yogi, 20 year veteran of yoga, who came here to develop end range strength to take his yoga yeah. to another level, you know, yeah. Yeah. because he, he wasn't able to access ranges where he needed to develop strength. Yeah. And, and that guy is so flexible. It's like, insane. He yeah. puts me to shame. Like yeah. his level of flexibility is like, it's like almost superhuman. Yeah. Tw I think 20 years of like serious yoga, 22 yeah. years, I think he said, yeah. 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 Yeah, but, and then, I mean, if my own personal experience for me, calisthenics, the big one for me was the, the press to handstand. I wanted to learn how to do a press to handstand. When I started learning about calisthenics and I was just looking around at what people do and the press to handstand is just such a cool move when you see people just put their hands on the ground and just gracefully press up into a handstand. And it just became apparent really quick that it didn't matter how strong you were. Like most other feats of strength that I had ever wanted to do, there was this element of push harder and you'll get there, you know, mm -hmm. like a pull up, all right? Like you pull harder and you'll get there. Yeah. But the press to handstand, it didn't matter how hard you pushed, if you couldn't compress properly, it, there's no way, it just wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. And and that was when I really started to realize, okay, you, you need strength 
and flexibility. You need this balance between the two. And one without the other is just as problematic because yeah. we, it's like you said, we have yogis that come in here that can bend themselves in half, but they can barely bench press half their body weight or they can't even squat half their body weight. And that's a real issue. And then you get the other end of the spectrum. You get some of these really strong people in like Mark, who one of our members who's so strong like his i mean he's bench pressing well over his own body weight and deadlifting almost uh, i think double his body weight um but his flexibility is so bad that he's got you know chronic pain in his body from it you know yeah and just on that uh flexibility like if you've gone too far down the flexibility route and you're not quite strong enough then you you're working like it, it it becomes so challenging because as you increase your range of motion you're getting to outer ranges of um muscle length and that's where you're going to be inherently weakest yeah. uh, you've also got longer moment arms which means that you're going to have to overcome even more force so like Go, getting the balance wrong with going too far in the flexibility journey without keeping that balance of strength just like can really yeah put you in a challenging and, and, and detrimental position I think you know it's a bit of a like I obviously am a big fan of flexibility and mobility training and I think it's a great thing but I, I do get somewhat uh, frustrated I try and encourage people to think that uh, you know that flexibility is not always the key to getting out of injury and, and better performance like sometimes yeah. you really need to get that balance right mm. so I, I will go so far as to say that flexibility on its own is quite dangerous mm. and um, flexibility without strength is useless <coughs> uh, I, I think that probably the the priority if you're not going to do both is to get strong yeah I'd agree you know like yeah. that don't get don't focus on getting flexible without strength you know mm. and I'm not saying go out go and run towards strength before you start stretching mm. uh, you, you should be doing it at a one-to-one -one ratio yeah. but I, I would go so far as to say that you know I see a lot of very strong people get on okay but, you know, we've got a cousin who's a contortionist who's been uh, working for uh, like Cirque du Soleil and all sorts of different amazing um, uh, circuses in Macau all her life. And she's messed up now mm. because she developed such extreme flexibility without having the strength. And what it seems to have done is caused excessive wear and tear on her spine and her joints because there's just well, not yeah, what happens stability. is with, with stability, you know, as I always talk about, you have active structures and passive structures. And if you're going to complete end ranges, then you're coming up against the resistance of passive structures as being the now the limiting factor. And so with passive structures, they don't have that same ability to kind of contract and control and they often uh, turn over their tissues a whole lot slower. So um, unlike a muscle where if you, you know, you kind of you get a bit of DOMS and then it gets stronger if you just push with your passive structures and that can be quite challenging with ligaments and cartilage. Um, so yeah it, yeah, it can really leave you in, in a pretty bad way. And the other big thing long term is um, looking at uh, like older age, basically you, muscle mass and bone mineral density is just so key. And if you've, you basically peak your muscle mass at around 30 and then you can hold on to it if you train really hard, but otherwise it will generally start to um, decline from 30 if you're training fairly normally. Um, so you really want to put your time into getting that strength up and then, you know, obviously try and maintain mobility throughout life. But if you've just put all your time into flexibility, then long term you you can really run into some issues just some big issues yeah yeah big 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 issues so uh i had a point that i wanted to make there but i've lost it now um we haven't had any answers for the question of the day <laughs> <laughs> or any questions yourself well look i've got something that i'd like to um wrap up with here a lot of people say come to this question where they say how do you do this? How do you put it all into one workout? How do you how do you create this thing? And this is exactly what the UMS does. But if you're not ready to jump in to that um, pool yet, go to our YouTube channel and have a look at the at home workouts. We we kept the peak week of phase three out of four phases. So we had four phases and each phase gets progressively more challenging. We kept the peak week, meaning the third week of phase three up on YouTube. So you can have a look at it and you can see how we combine strength, flexibility and fitness into a balanced workout. And um, I think for those of you that are- Balanced and efficient, that's the hard, because that's yeah, often the hardest part. Yeah, that's like. right. Well, this is the other thing we didn't talk about today, which we spoke about yesterday, which is that doing this, uh, not only combining strength and flexibility in the workout, but also combining agonist, antagonist <laughs> muscle groups, not only keeps you in balance, but it dramatically enhances the efficiency of your workouts. Yeah. So, you know, one of the biggest problems that we have, and we even have this within our, uh, some of our programs that we're remodeling this year to get the workouts to be able to be done in an hour in 60 minutes because when we first released 
everything it was about what's going to be the best what's going to produce the best possible result and like most coaches to produce the best possible result you tr you have you programming for workouts that, are, that that take longer than an hour you know mm -hmm. because your your goal you're fixated on i want to get this result in the shortest amount of time possible you know but then you come across this problem that just about everybody has it's probably less than 0.1 percent of people who have more time than an hour to work out every day uh, and so you, you if you're not maximizing efficiency and if you're not uh, giving people a platform to get the work done then they're likely not going to do it mm -hmm. and this is why unity gym seems to get much better results than most people um, because we have compacted it into a 60 minute workout and so the guys just by turning up every day get everything done and over at the space of three six nine twelve months have incredibly inspiring transformations you know when whereas everyone else is trying to jam pack this like ridiculous amount of work into a 90 minute or two hour workout and they're you know very rarely getting more than one or two workouts done a week with their clients some of them might get three workouts done a week I know because I used to be one of these coaches um, who you know was incredibly lucky to see my client more than three times a week or see them in the gym more than three times a week and we just know that um, you know part of the factor that we're trying to do here is create habit create a daily habit of getting your body exposed to some movement some exercise you know mm -hmm. and uh and and if you're not able to get the work done then nothing happens nothing happens yeah. you know um and so yeah it's it's the, the the efficiency model getting it dialed in combining strength and flexibility combi combining agonist antagonist combining you know global muscle uh with stabilizer muscle work every workout is really really important and i challenge anyone who disagrees that we will get better results than you <laughs> I, I honestly believe we will yeah. if you look at our work over a year let's let's put it to the test yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i agree I agree. Yeah, all right. Well, I think uh, that's a mic drop, uh, Just isn't quickly it? before we do wrap up, I want to thank Dave Clark, who uh, went on and, and added a review to my new physio business that I've started with, Nilesh uh, Murti, who, uh, and he, yeah, followed the link I pop popped in um, two episodes ago and, and, and put a nice review about how I'm occasionally on the podcast. Well, occasionally <laughs> no more, Dave. I'm back. Uh, so. Back for good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really yeah, really good. appreciate the review. And anyone else who does, like, you know, want to help support my business, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're getting off the ground. We're going to be uh, putting out lots of online physio programs once we get the clinic up and running. So yeah. uh, watch this space. Did we, before we go, um, so please do that. Please do um, give, send Phil some love. Uh, send him and Nilesh some love. It will help their business get off the ground and it'll help Unity Gym because their practice is here in Unity Gym and we want that working. We've invested quite heavily to set that up for them. Uh, now, did we get on to Chris and the marketing team? Are we going to do a flash sale this weekend? We for the are, yeah, yeah, we're going to do Oh, big announcement. Workouts. I pushed for it. I pushed for it. I'm going to take credit for this, but Rad can tell you. So because <laughs> of what, what we're looking, what Daljit's just said, and the more that we're seeing it happen more and more and more around the world, we're hearing, we've just been told that Canada's gone into a four week lockdown period. Uh, America is um, smash the like button tribe know, getting getting hit hard. Uh, Daljit's just said the UK is back in a lockdown. Um, there's other countries over in uh, uh, Europe that I'm being told uh, going back into lockdown again. So it looks as though the world is uh, it, it, we, we are not coming out of this lockdown period and the need to be able to do the best possible workouts that you can at home with no equipment. So what we are going to do, we are going to make our incredibly successful and incredibly popular at home workouts available for those of you who don't yet have them uh, this weekend. So you will be able to get um, the at home workouts at a, at a dramatically reduced price. And make no mistake, these things are quite likely going to be more effective at making you strong, fit and flexible than anything that you've ever done before, even in the gym. And I say that because I did it every day for one hour for 12 weeks and I put on six kilos of muscle, was leaner than I've probably ever been in my adult life and um, 
I also even increased my flexibility and I'm an already pretty flexible person and I became so much fitter because I don't do that much cardio. But <laughs> he, God it's true. He brought it. all the girls to the yard. I, they were yeah, queued up outside. Man, it was pretty intense. Seriously. And you can, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you can see it. You can see my transformation from week one, phase one to, to week four, uh, phase three. Are, so. Uh, I reckon we should do, I, I reckon, you know what we should do? I reckon we, if we have a successful, if enough people jump on this over the weekend, I reckon we should get Rad to do another live stream at home workout. Just one special. I reckon um, we should get Yanni to do a live stream <laughs> at home Another workout. at home live stream with his shirt off. What do you think, Tribe? They are, yeah. Smash they, the like button if you want that. They're no Crack joke, guys. Baby oil. So, um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, that'll be, uh, that'll be going live in about 24 hours uh, from today. So don't miss it. Yeah. We always get people saying we always get people saying oh I, you know I'm, i missed out on this but guys I'm, I'm sorry we we have integrity and we make our sales available only for a limited time so that we um uh, reward the people that are action takers and do jump on it Dal right. daljit saying yes is that to the at-home workout flash sale or yes no, to rad to shirt coming it's off it's definitely yes to yanni <laughs> doing the at-home workouts <laughs> all right guys we'll see you tomorrow, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. bye bye health is about performance not just body image you better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there we'll start focusing on movement goals strength goals flexibility goals when you nail that skill it's there forever the body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there it's not the intensity there's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.